As you board, please move across your car to make room for everyone and kindly offer available seating to those needing special assistance. If you're standing, please hold on to the handrails and stay clear of the doors. They will be closing in a moment. Thank you. Hey, howdy, hey, and welcome to Disney Assembled. I'm Troy. And I'm Mimi. And we are your happy little father-daughter podcast here to share our love for all things Disney. We have a very special episode coming up here. In just a moment, we're going to have a conversation with Crystal from planningthemagic.net. But before we get into that, Mimi, you know what time it is. What time is it? It's time for the Disney Dad Joke of the Week. So for those of you who are listening out there, we do a Disney dad joke of the week and Mimi doesn't know the joke. She gets to hear it here for the first time and we get her reaction to it. So here we go. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. Why did Goofy stare at the orange juice all day? Why? Because the carton said to concentrate. Oh. (laughs) You get it? Concentrate? So there's that wasn't like Disney. Well, Goofy. I mean, yeah, but I mean, I don't know. All right. Well, there it is. So if you want to submit a Disney dad joke, hopefully it is better than that one. Go ahead and shoot us an email, disneyassembled at gmail.com. Or you can reach out to us through our social networks. Mimi, why don't you tell them how they can do that? Um, you can DM us on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter, all at Disney Assembled. We're really active on our Instagram mainly. Um, you can also send us an email, disneyassembled.gmail.com. So speaking of receiving emails, a few weeks ago, we received an email from a really, really nice lady named Crystal from Planning the Magic. And that's, um, that's her company where she does a lot, does Disney vacation planning. She specializes in, um, being budget safe and just going cheap. And so she reached out to us about doing an episode and we were like, cool. And so coming up in a few minutes, we're going to sit down and talk with Crystal about what she does and how you can do Disney on a budget. Yeah, we have a great conversation plan with Crystal. We're excited to to speak with her about her ideas for doing a great Disney vacation on a budget. Uh, but before we do that, there are a couple of ways we'd also like to encourage our listeners to support the show. One is certainly we hope you have subscribed to our podcast. That way you never miss an episode. Our podcast is available on most major podcatchers, and we're trying to add it to more. Uh, If your particular podcast streaming service uh, that you prefer, if we're not on it yet, send us an email or DM us so we can get in, get on that right away. Uh, You can also visit our store on tpublic.com, do a search for Disney Assembled to grab some of that really cool Disney Assembled merch. And finally, we are now uh, have a Patreon account. Go to patreon.com slash Disney Assembled to help support the show. For only $5 a month, you have access to extra Patreon patron only content. And we'll be happy to mention the names of our patrons on the show each week. So we hope you consider doing that. If not, no big deal. The show is free to enjoy and we hope you enjoy it. So Mimi, with that, are you ready to jump into our conversation with Crystal? Yep. All right. Well, Crystal, welcome to Disney Assembled. Mimi and I are thrilled to have you uh, with us today. And uh, so for our listeners, Crystal is from planningthemagic.net. She is a Disney vacation planner, and a lot of her works is focused and specializes with uh, families on that are very budget conscious and trying to save as much money as possible for planning their trip. So Crystal, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. We're thrilled to be with you. Um, why don't we get started by having you share with our listeners 
your Disney story? How did you get all started up with this Disney craziness? I know it's crazy. It's so much fun. So um, when I was younger, as a child, I, I grew up um, in a household where we would take Disney trips almost every year. I have pictures from before I can, I don't remember, but I also have memories from, you know, like five years old or six years old. I have memories. Um, and then unfortunately I was like 13 and my family, like my entire family kind of hit a financial hardship and the Disney trips kind of stopped, but it's funny because I was also going through puberty. So I didn't even care at that time, you know, <laughs> I did. I wasn't thinking about Disney at all. And um, so when I, I started going to college, started going to Rutgers University, I think I was, yeah, I was 21 at the time. I have a little sister who's 11 years younger. So she was 10. And so, and so I was out of that. I was still like a child. You're still kind of like a child at 21, but I was out of that like teenager phase. And I was like, I really want to go to Disney. Mm -hmm. And, um, what's funny was I was paying for my way through college. I was broke. Like, I, I don't even know how I would put gas in my car. I'm not even sure, but, um, I wanted to find a way. So I was also a lifeguard because at that time I worked at a YMCA. So I would work at the front desk if they had hours as a life at the lifeguard at the pool. So I want to be able to do both. So that's why I got my certification. So that summer I started working 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. every day at an apartment pool and I had a notebook and it wasn't a Disney notebook it was it's kind of ugly now that I think about it um and I would just sit there and plan all day using my phone and, and I just saved up all my money I could um and I was able to take us both to Disney World but in order to do so I had to do it on a super duper budget that that was the only way it was gonna work so we went we actually went for eight days we went to um, three parks out of the four. I rented a car, all that cool stuff. I forgot to feed my sister the first day. I was talking <laughs> about that. That was great. So that's kind of how it started. Um, and planning the magic.net and all that other stuff kind of started because I'm a big fan of like, um, like Pat Flynn, who does Smart Passive Income. And he was like, oh, you know, I started this website and I, this is what I do for a living. And I, I was like, I want to start a website and do that for a living. And so I was like, I should probably do something that I'm passionate about, which I don't regret at all because it's not easy. You know, you'll, you'll be working hard at it for years before you ever see anything. Um, and so that's how playing the magic.net started. Excellent. Thank you. That's a great story. Yeah. <laughs> Forgetting. I sometimes forget to feed Mimi for days on end, which <laughs> we find empty Mac and cheese cartons all over the, the house because she has decided that if she doesn't fend for herself, then there will be a bigger problem. Right. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's a great story. And I think it's great advice about just sticking with it for years and years because it's not going to happen right away. No. Um, and that's great. It's good. Uh, it's a good thing for people to hear because I think a lot of people, you know, uh, success to happen immediately. So sticking with it and being consistent is really, really important. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. So let's let's jump into some of the topics about, you know, planning trips to Disney that maybe a lot of families are thinking of uh, in the current setting. Yeah. So um, as we all know, Disney released their plans to reopen in phases. So what are your opinions on those phases and the reopening and like what advice would you give to someone who says, I really want to go, but I'm kind of on the fence of like you know, safety and, and health and all of that. Right. Yeah. So I think, so I think as far as health, obviously I'm not a healthcare professional, but, um, I think as far as health with the coronavirus, the way I kind of, um, you know, I, I, I get like the flashing news from CNN every day. The way I kind of see it is, you know, at this point, I, I feel comfortable living my life for the most part, but also protecting myself and others. So when I go out, I wear gloves. All of our vehicles have hand sanitizers in them. So as soon as we get in we sanitize our hands, we wash our hands when we get home. We're very careful with what we touch and blah, blah, blah. And so I feel like there is a part of us as Americans that we need to kind of 
start living our lives as, as in the best way we can while being safe and not putting others at risk. Um, as far as Disney, I think it's going to depend. I think that depends on what kind of, tr- what kind of trip or type of trip that you're trying to take. So for example, I have clients who have never been, mm-hmm. or this is going to be, they take a trip once every five years or, or whatever the case might be. I probably wouldn't suggest going right now um, because it's, you do it less seldom, right? So it's, it's like, you, you might want it to be a little more exciting than what maybe what it is right now. Now for someone who maybe a family that goes every year, mm-hmm. everyone's in good health. No one's like at risk or anything like that. As long as you're okay with the masks and the heat, it's, you know, I'm from New Jersey. It's very different for me to be in the heat and be in a mask and for me to be in a store that's air conditioned and be in a mask. I personally, so that's like a personal, um, you know, a personal opinion. I personally would not go to Disney in the summer with the mask. I would go in the fall. I would go in the winter. I would wear the mask, you know. Um, I think it's, it's, it would be a little bit different of a Disney vacation than what most people think of or are used to. I think it'd be a little slower, slow going. Maybe you're not going to get every ride, that kind of thing. So as long as you're okay with all of those, I think it's fine to plan a Disney vacation right now. Now, if this is going to be the one trip you're going to take for the next 10 years, probably holding off to next year is, is the best so that you can get the full experience. So what Disney's doing is they have to open, right? right. The economy, all that, their employees. So they're just trying to open in the best way they can. And I'm going in October. I'll be wearing the mask. But I'm also probably going to go like five months later. So I don't mind if I go in October, I get in the park, I can only last like five hours because of the mask and I'm, you know, and then I just mostly stay in my room. I like to enjoy the hotels and all that. Mm-hmm. I would love I would love to do that. And there's a lot of people who would too. Yeah. Okay. You know, Irene and I were talking about doing a, a trip right at the very before actually before disney came out with any of their reopening plans i remember telling mimi that it would be hard to go right now if you were budget conscious because if i'm gonna spend I, they're not lowering prices so if, <laughs> like I'm, if I'm, I'm gonna, gonna spend the money like i want to spend the money and get the whole i thing, want the whole right. experience right and so you know, for a family with a, a small child that really wants to meet characters and run yeah. up to princesses and they can't do that right now, it's going to be really, really hard for them. Yeah. So, I, yeah, go ahead. I'd be interested to see the statistics that tell us um, percentage wise the um, how many people visit Disney World and are people who just constantly go more than once every two years and how many are you know, just go here and there. It, it's probably, I wouldn't be surprised if it was kind of like 50, 50. Mm-hmm. So I think those people who go off then, like I said, I think they're good to go and they should, you know, maybe pay attention to the heat. It's really uncomfortable. I think maybe it's all mental. Cause in the mask, I'm like, <laughs> you know, um, but I did read a study that we're actually able probably to get like 3% less oxygen. So it is probably all mental, you know? Yeah. Um, so I think that, and then that will work, right? Because of the capacity has to be lower. And, and so if those 50% of people that go off in are the ones that are going, mm-hmm. you know, it'll be easier on the cast members just to, you know, people are very, not, I don't want to say demanding, but they want what they've paid for, like you said. So if, if it's all people like that, the cast members are going to run away, you right. know? Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a challenge. I know where we are in Texas, it's very warm and we spend a lot of time outside because both Mimi and her brother do a lot of outdoor activities and we, I wear my mask everywhere and it can be a little bit of a challenge. So I can understand maybe waiting to the fall or winter at the minimum, if you're worried about comfort levels. Yeah. But you know, the going to the park is a, a big investment, but I do know that there are some areas that, that you have advised people on how they could save money. Um, and two areas that I know I'm very interested in because I have two children, and when we go to the parks, it's it, be, it can become exponentially more expensive, especially <laughs> in areas of food and souvenirs. So, you know, if you were talking to a family about some ways for them to save a little money on food and souvenirs, what are some of the ideas that you would maybe give them? Yeah, so for 
So the first tip um, would probably kind of um, cover both a little bit is going to be your park bag is probably something um, that a lot of people don't think about. You know, you get there and you're like, oh, I should have brought a backpack or I should have brought a smaller backpack than the one I took in the, on the plane. That's happened to me. Um, so your park bag is super important and that a lot of souvenir and food saving. I was trying to see if I had one of my backpacks here. I would love to show you guys. I have the ones that fold up. And so it's like this big mm -hmm. and um, I have a camera. So usually the, the, the backpack I go on the plane with is my camera backpack, which also has space for other stuff like my laptop and stuff. And then I just throw that one in my, um, in my bag and I use it for the parks. Cause it's like kind of like the perfect size. It's waterproof. So if it rains, my stuff doesn't get wet. So your backpack is going to be important because number one for f saving on food budget is you want to have, you want to provide some of your own food kind of similar to when you're home. So like water, right? You want to get like a case of water. You put that in that backpack. Um, some, some snacks. I don't, I don't know why I'm, I'm pretty conscious of like how much I eat, what I eat. Um, but at Disney, I'm just hungry every about three minutes or so. And so I'll bring a lot of snacks. I'll try to um, be careful with like what I eat and how I eat my portions. And I say that not like in terms of like losing weight or anything like that. A lot of portions are big. So when we think Casey's Corner and Magic Kingdom, that's a foot long hot dog. You know, so if you're getting that, you can split that. Each person gets a side. Maybe you need a drink. Maybe you don't because you have your water. Um, depends. I like the crystal light packets, the fruit punch. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll bring that if I'm a little bit tired of water. Don't get me wrong. There are times where I'll splurge and I'll buy, especially, I usually try to do that like once a day. Maybe dinner. We'll get like a full course meal and, and we'll have fun. But that's kind of what I do. I bring my own water. I bring my own snacks. I try to have breakfast in, I try to provide my own breakfast and that helps with two things, cost. But also I get to the park like 45 minutes before it opens because that's the right way to tour it. Mm -hmm. I never wait more than like 20, 25 minutes in a line. I haven't in the past like probably 10 years. Hmm. Not 10 years, that's way too long. I'm not that old. I'll say seven years. <laughs> I'm not that old. <laughs> seven years. Um, so I'm usually eating breakfast on the go. So we'll take like a, we'll take, we'll get bagels and cream cheese, toast them, put some cream cheese on them. And we're just out the door. Maybe there's a yogurt in the bag. I have a coffee in my hand. I bring coffee and filters from home. I throw that in my luggage. I'm a big coffee drinker. Um, so that, that kind of thing, set a budget. And then also when you're buying groceries, be very careful. I have gone. And so the kids, one wanted Gatorade, one wanted this cereal, the other wanted this. And I actually didn't really think about it because I'm like, oh, we're buying groceries. But we bought so much priority that we were wasteful. And I spent way too much money on groceries. So it's important as a family, you know, we're going for seven days, maybe two boxes of cereal is fine for like a family of four. Mm -hmm. We have to agree. We're not getting, you're getting one, I'm getting one. It doesn't matter what your favorite is, just one that you're going to eat. Frosted Flakes, I feel like is a good generic cereal that everybody likes you know um so yeah. that that's definitely a big one for food souvenirs i think that's re that's really going to depend on the age of your children so little kids i feel like at the older they get the more expensive your toys are right you know lightsabers all that stuff little kids they want like dolls and cars and and stuff like that so what you can do is a lot of my readers what they like to do is they bring stuff with them from home they buy all that stuff at home, pack in the luggage. And uh, one of my readers gives her child, or she has two children, a gift every morning from home. You know, some of the stuff she got at Dolly, Dollar Tree, Family Dollar, online for four bucks. And it kind of helps them have a souvenir ready. When I went, I got my sister, like, this cup. And it had, we should put her water in it, but it was only, like, eight ounces. So her water was really in my backpack underneath it would screw off and she would have like teddy grams in there and she would wear it around her neck but it was like mini mouse hmm. uh shirts stuff like that when they're older i think giving them gift cards and a budget mm -hmm. and just saying no it's so hard right because even as adults i go there and i like overspend on souvenirs yeah. i bought a phone case with my name on it like a disney phone case it was like i didn't need it and it's so bulky i barely use it <laughs> but at the time i was like oh i love this I, and I also like to, now that they have the Shop Disney app, and you could pick up and see where it is in Disney World, what mm -hmm. I'll do is I'll find it on the app, I'll add it to my cart, 
and I'll wait until the end of the trip. A lot of times when I do that, I stop wanting it. You know, hmm. I'm like, you know what? I could do without that robe. Right. You know, so those souvenirs is tough, but you know, just set, setting a budget and sticking to it. That's, that's for sure. And for the food, the groceries, and then all of this is going to get like put in your park bag. Well, we can talk about more of that. More yeah. about that. Yeah. So when you talk about groceries and stuff, that's either staying on or off property. You, yeah, you just... I do it any. Yeah, I almost I do it on every vacation I go on. I went to Paris and did it. You know. Cool. For yeah. me, with the souvenirs, it's not. I mean, like, yes, I want a lightsaber and a, you know this that, and the other thing, but for me, it's a lot about pins and ears. And those pins and those ears are like, oh, seven dollars. That's nothing. And then they rack up that so up. fast. Yeah, I have been blamed. I, I have spent many hours in pen shops and oh, come out so and nice. people shaking their heads with yeah. why so many really things. seriously you so behind nice. us, you know, we have the one thing Mimi really wanted when she was younger and we had to get two of them were the, Stupid the mini, mini spinny thing. The spinning mini thing. So we have a pink one and a red one. They're still with us. They don't, we don't, we have to put batteries in them, but yeah. Yeah, when they're younger, it's a little easier. I agree with you. I think, you know, you get a t-shirt. You can get, a, like, the t-shirt I wear, the last time I went, I bought at Target. Before, right. Right? Yeah. So, you get them anywhere. Yeah. Now you can buy a cry cut and make them. Yeah. True, true. Certain families, you know, certain people, that makes more financial sense than buying them, you know, every single year. Right. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. Another thing I did with my sister was I made her bring everything with, back with her every year so she did get mickey ears but the hat version yeah mm -hmm. um she did get one of those fans that spurts out water mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i want to say that's probably it so every year when we we would go she would pack it with her because i'm not rebuying right, mm -hmm. right. and it, it really taught her responsibility too because i always we didn't you know obviously we're so so far in age we didn't live together so I would send her a list, and if she forgot it, she knew that she just wasn't going to have it, and I wasn't buying another one, you know? So I was like, let me make sure. I would send her a list, you know? I'll try that. We're not we're not buying another spinning mini. No more spinning minis. That's it. No more. Um, so Mimi had a, a question about different parks. Yeah, so when we vacation, we tend to lean towards like Disneyland as opposed to Disney World because Disney World seems so big. Mm -hmm. But since it's so big and have so many parks, I was wondering if any of those specific parks have their own unique challenges when it comes to like planning. For sure. I think the every park has its challenges for like 100%. The one that came to mind right away was Epcot. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is you'll see a lot of people talk about what am I going to do with my kids at Epcot? You know, mm -hmm. Epcot's really nice for, and when I say kids, I mean, you know, 12 and under, because mm -hmm. even at, at a certain age, once you're able to comprehend and the souvenir tricking gets a little hard, you're able to also enjoy Epcot and all the countries that they have. And you can walk in and out of stores. Kids don't want to do that for six hours. No. They're all walking in and out out of stores you know and so epcot has through the years been trying to make it you know more attractions make it more kid friendly even when you think about rides like spaceship earth and soaring i don't know i think a five-year-old would be intrigued mm -hmm. but i think that's more you know as an adult you understand more what you're seeing yeah like, wow taj mahal you know or when you're older and as a teenager so I think that's the tricky one. Hey, I want to go to Epcot. I have kids. What do I do? Should I go? Is it worth it? That kind of thing. Um, the other one is Magic Kingdom. You know, tickets are very expensive. I always say, even on my blog, there's not a lot of money you can save on tickets. You know, the, the goal is to save everywhere else so that tickets hurt a little less. Mm -hmm. um, so with the tickets... You know, Magic Kingdom is huge. It's not huge. It's not the biggest park, but it has the most to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it has all those good rides and the long waits. And, like, I would love to have my clients go two days. You know, when you have kids of varying ages, you know, you have, like, a 8-year-old and a 15-year-old. They're going to want to do different things. But you kind of want to stay together. Um, so that's Magic, that's Magic Kingdom's thing. It's just so much to do. 
Now you want to do characters. Oh my God. Now we, well, let's do a character breakfast because that's going to take you half a day, you know? Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of little different things. Every park has it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We, our children have grown out of the autograph book, tracking down all the characters and the character meal stuff. I mean, we used to have to plan mm-hmm all of that and now i think we can just kind of go with the flow which is helpful but we haven't been to disney world like we haven't been with magic bands like we've no the last time we went they were just using the regular fast pass pass, the paper fast pass we switched to disneyland because we have family in california that can you know like set us up with like a decent hotel that like wasn't too expensive so it's like (laughs) that's why we made the yeah and there's some differences that i mean i mean a lot don't get me wrong i can't wait to have a big disney world vacation again i think that's if we could do anything we would want to do that yeah but you know each resort has its you know, one of the things we loved about going to Disneyland is we could stay off off property and walk in yeah, the we doors, would walk to the park. and it was no really didn't waste any time. And we did and the whole so park forth, in so. like five days. Yeah, we could do well. We, we were like there like the three days, and we did almost everything. So yeah. So Love let's that. talk about the resorts a little bit. I can. I think that's you know when we're planning, especially a trip to Florida. Um, I know when we have gone as a family, I mean, I, I mean, I've stayed at a, a few resorts. because I've, I've been there. I was there. I, I had, blah, blah, blah. I went to Disney world before I was married and had a family. And then of course, after getting married, we, and my wife and I honeymooned at the Polynesian oh, for that. Very nice. Yeah, wow. very nice. But so, but we, I've stayed at value with, you know, before I got married, you know, we've stayed at luxury, you know, from a honeymoon and we've stayed at some moderate resorts. I know as a family, uh, Mimi may not remember, but I know we stayed at, um, wilderness lodge yeah. one time. And we stayed at, I think the, the Caribbean beach resort yeah. they had the different mm-hmm. beaches. Right. But I guess we're curious to know about, you know, the, the moderate, the value, the luxury, you know, is it worth the money? especially the moderate, it kind of feels like some of them might be more worth it than others. What, what is your opinion on that? Okay. So I've stayed at value moderate and deluxe. Um, I didn't, I want to say the value when I stayed at value resorts, it was really, it was difficult for me in the sense of like, the theming is very loud. Um, it was uh, four of us, my parents, my sister and I. However, this was like three years ago. So um, I, I was 26 and she must have been like 15. Um, it's very, it's, it's child friendly, the value resort said, you know, the art of animation, the little mermaid and all the big characters and stuff. Um, and it was nothing that really spoke to us in a sense. Mm-hmm. The other thing, so I feel like if, if if I had a client and they were okay with value, I would, you know, that's great. I think if that's what we, I've stayed there because that's what I could afford for that trip. And that's, you know, we went during Halloween and it was kind of last minute. Um, but I would try to do a moderate before I did a value, obviously, um, only because for um, resorts like um, Port Orleans, Riverside, both Riverside and French Quarter, those were really nice. The theming's a little quieter. You would be surprised when I went for Halloween and I found out that Disney's value resorts don't have hot tubs. I was upset. <laughs> you know? It was a little, it was a little too cold for the pool, you know, and um, it was like low seventies. Yeah. And I was upset that there was there weren't any hot tubs when you go to the moderates, you get Whole bunch of pools you get a few pools have will have the pool bar um the values like the all-star resorts don't have that um you have the hot tub i like that the theme is less loud they're all pretty big but what you'll see is for the moderate the deluxe deluxe villa they'll have multiple bus stops where for the value it's all one bus stop so you have to walk all the way to the front of the the resort 
Mm -hmm. um, and get on the bus. And sometimes that's like a 15 minute walk alone, just to get to the front of resort of the resort. So I'm not a huge fan of the value, but I understand why, you know, sometimes people have to stay within value resorts. I think over a value resort, what I would suggest is one of the seven Disney Springs resorts. Mm -hmm. So there are seven hotels on Disney property, not owned or managed by Disney. There's a Best Western, there's a Holiday Inn, there's a Double Tree. The Double Tree is all suites. Um, so there's seven of them in total. There's a, um, I believe like Westgate might have one. Am I thinking Westgate? Um, so they're nice. And so they're more on level with the moderate, but for the price of the value. And some of those, there's a Hilton. Some of those also get the extra magic hours. Some of those have the shuttles to the parks. One of them, I want to say maybe the best Western is right across the street from Disney Springs. Mm -hmm. Literally, there's a there's an overpass that you walk through across the highway and you're in Disney Springs. So you could even technically take a Disney bus to the parks if you just cross the overpass. Um, yeah, so before value, I would suggest one of those seven. The only thing you lose is the Magical Express, which people like me, I hate driving. And I definitely don't want to spend like 40 bucks on an Uber. So that's hard to lose, but um, I would choose I would choose one of those over value. The deluxe. I'm actually a DVC member, so I almost I I stay at like the deluxe villas. Um, I can't complain about anything. I can stay there for a week, never go to a park, and be like happy, happy as can be. Cool. So, if you were giving advice, people, you would say if you're going to stay on property, it's probably worth. A little bit extra to do to upgrade to moderate from yeah for sure you have yeah. a question about i thought our last question was going to be like <laughs> talk about the vacation club i didn't i, I yeah. didn't really prepare that but you mentioned that you know i've tried to read about it and it seems extraordinarily complicated to me but if, if you could give our listeners sort of a, a sort of a 30,000 few foot, uh, <laughs> foot view of vacation club membership, you know, for what kind of family is it worth the investment? Um, for anyone looking to go at least once a year, okay. it would definitely be the wor worth the investment. So what DVC is, it's a timeshare, mm -hmm. but Disney even made their timeshare magical in a sense. Um, so what you do is you buy into one of the resorts. I think right now there might be 13 DVC resorts, including like the Grand uh, Californian, the Vero Beach, Hilton Head. Um, I believe there are 13. Riviera is the newest one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what it does is you kind of, in a sense, prepay for all of your stays you do end up saving money in terms of um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like the value of the dollar. If, right. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, so for example, you might pay, I feel like you save more money than that, but I don't want to say that until I really analyze it. Sure. But let's say a, a deluxe villa room is 200 a night. And that's like being very, that's very low. Let's say 300 a night in 2017. And you know that you want to stay at least seven nights a year for the next 50 years. It's almost in a sense like you prepay it. You don't pay it all at one shot, right. but you lock in that rate. And so you might pay, you might go there and, and, and pay and spend $3,000, mm -hmm. but you're not going to have to dish out any money, let's say for the next three years for your stay for your hotel. Um, and then all in all, you might be in, it depends really. There's so many different factors, but that's really what it is. So you buy a, you buy a contract based off points. So you get a hundred points, right? Mm -hmm. And then you look at, there's four basic type of rooms. There's a studio, there's a one bedroom, there's a two bedroom, and there's a three bedroom. Each room is different amount of points per night, but then the points also differ with the resorts. Right. So I might look at, hey, look, Animal Kingdom Lodge studio, nine points a night. Bay Lake Tower Studio, 15 points a night. Mm -hmm. right? Those are real numbers. Right. Um, and then it also depends on season. So then you get 100 points and you divvy up how you want. If you are more local, like you're a little closer, let's say even six hours, and you want to go on three weekend trips with those points, you can do it. There's no set day as long as there's availability. 
you can book. Um, so that's pretty much it. The other, when I bought into DVC, I bought, I purchased the resale, which means someone like me no longer wanted their contract and sold it. So back then there wasn't much of a difference between resale purchases and direct from Disney. Disney has changed that since then. Basically what they've done is they, they've said, if you purchase resale, you get your DVC, you are a DVC member, but you don't get any almost any of the perks that come with it. So you get to send, save 20% off on the stores and all the restaurants and stuff. You don't get any of that. If we do a ticket special. Yeah. So it's almost worth losing it in the sense. If you look at the price difference, you know, I, at that time, I think I saved 75% purchasing resale. Right. So I probably still would have, even if I didn't have the perks, you know? Right. Right. So that's what DVC is. So when I plan my vacations, I don't, have to worry about my my stay cool i'm gonna pick up this? my dog because he's whining that's okay no he's go for it cute, i promise he's cute Aww. he's cute what what's his name milo ah there he is he was gonna start barking any minute so i was like i should pick him up that's okay <laughs> so real quick about you you talked about saving money on food what is your quick opinion on meal plans a meal plan is equivalent to, to prepaying your meals. If you're having, let's say the quick service, two meals, two meals a day, every person is purchasing their own meal. It's equivalent to just prepaying it. You might save like a dollar or two per meal, mm -hmm. but you would save much more money if let's say you're doing like, you know, like the Casey's Corner example, right. um, Cosmic Ray Cafe, you can get that rotisserie chicken. That's easy. Easily you can split that. You can't do that. So when I've done the Disney dining plan, it's, I don't eat all of it. It's way too much food. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Just a prepay. Yeah. So my last question was, um, what are the most overlooked aspects of a Disney trip? Like if you're planning with someone, they're like, oh, like I kind of want to skip that. And then they come back and they're like, I regret skipping that. Like what, like, do you see any patterns in that, you know, sense? Yeah, yeah. Um, so the first one while we're planning, one of the biggest things is people don't realize, like, especially for Fast Pass and some of the dining locations, you have to be on it with the reservations. If you if you're staying at the resort at a Disney resort, you get a 60 day window. On that sit you have you know, I'll wake up at 2 a.m. and I'm reserved, you know, it's something me and my clients will talk about. They will talk about which rides. So I'll have a list. And I'll start reserving. If you don't, you still get fast passes, but you won't get them from for like Seven Doors, Mine Train. You might not get Space Mountain, stuff like that. Sometimes people don't realize and they're like, you know, I'll go when I wake up or, you know, oh crap, I forgot I'll do it tomorrow. Don't mm -hmm. do that. You gotta, you know, it's, it's, it's so competitive. It's not, it's not good, but it is, it's because it's, it's free, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so that's probably one of the, the top ones. Also, I think, Sometimes people forget to plan about what happens when you get there. Mm. So you're there, you have your hotel, you have your tickets. Okay. Um, when I go with my clients, we kind of make a schedule and we're like, well, Monday we're going to do this and Tuesday we're going to do this. And then I'll create touring plans for them so that they don't wait online. Um, where are you going to eat? Because the more you leave it up in the air, the more money you will spend. Mm. You know good. what I mean? Yeah. Um, you'll be like, oh, where? And then you're just going to walk into somewhere that's going to have like overpriced ice cream. And it's going to be, it's not going to be a good time. So um, that's definitely one of them making a schedule, at least a, a, a small schedule. It doesn't have to be like every minute. Right. And then the last one I would be, I would say is the park bag. You know, paying attention to getting a good park bag that's comfortable, putting the right things in there, the ponchos, bringing the ponchos. Um, I bring a bag for the ponchos once they're wet. So we put them in the bag that goes in the backpack and mm -hmm. we make sure we take them off when we get on the ride like this. Cause you don't want to get the inside wet. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Cause you're going to put them back on when you get out the ride. I'm not buying $12 ponchos. I buy them at Target <laughs> for a dollar. We yeah. may still have some of our ponchos yeah. from way back. I Cause know. I don't wear them. I like yeah. getting wet. Well, it sounds it's like, like part of the experience. I mean, and again, there's so much to do. And you're right. I mean, if you leave it up to chance, I can imagine that it can be very overwhelming and you end up spending more money. And so it does help to get 
help from someone like yourself to to help with that planning. And at the end of the at the end of the show, we'll make sure we have a chance to let everyone know how they can connect with you. But we uh, we came up with some fun questions, Mimi and I, that we thought would be good to sort of wrap up our time together and help our listeners learn a little bit more about you. Excited. And you are you're our first guest on the show so you're you're the guinea pig for these questions so hopefully they'll go well okay. um but so crystal which of the disney theme parks is your favorite what's your favorite theme park mm. i would have to say i have to say magic kingdom because it's just the most traditional you know when you think disney i am an east coaster so i have gone to disneyland as an adult but there's something to be said. They're very different parks. And there's something to be said of when you start at Disney World and then you go to Disneyland versus vice versa. Um, so, yeah, I would have to say Magic Kingdom. Everything about it. I, I will never get tired of that view. Main Street is amazing. The memories I get as a kid. I don't have a single memory from Epcot as a kid. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. I think yeah. that's – I couldn't imagine going to Florida right, to, the Disney, to Walt Disney World – and not doing Magic Kingdom. I could certainly yeah. see not doing one of the other parks, but right. I could not imagine not doing that. See, but I can't imagine skipping Animal Kingdom. Like, I feel like that one is just, it's like the Do seven. you remember anything from Animal Kingdom from last time we went? Yeah, I do. Okay. I was also like six. You can't exactly <laughs> like peg that question on me. I, well, Animal King is very so different long. now than it was when we went last time because Pandora yeah. wasn't even there when yeah. we went last time. So. Oh, you guys are going to love it. I'm oh, sure. Yeah. What's your favorite attraction? It could be a show, ride. What, what, what's your favorite attraction? You can name more than one if there's like a, if it's hard to pick. It's tough. Like, um... So I would say for Thrill, Big Thunder Mountain. Actually, I love Space Mountain, but I it, Big Thunder Mountain is so rickety, and you're like da 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 da, da the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> it feels so realistic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, for Thrill Big Thunder Mountain, and then otherwise, I would say it's a tie tie between Spaceship Earth and Soaring. I would have to say. Cool. Yeah, I I really want to do the. Um, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. I've literally been waiting to ride that ride for so long. And you're like, no, let's get to Disneyland. It wasn't there and, last time we went. And oh, no, that's changed. No, literally, it's all changed. To Disney World, yeah. All right. So the next one is, which, what's your favorite character and your favorite movie? And they don't have to be linked. Like, they could be separate. Okay. So my, uh, my favorite movie is Beauty and the Beast. Mm -hmm. For sure. Um, I love the music music the characters i i know it's controversial but i feel like emma watson was a good one like she was I, a good one yeah when i first when they first said her i was like oh that's gonna be weird for me because i'm a big harry potter fan yeah but then when i saw it i was like oh man she's perfect you no, know yeah, she did a really good job um someone was i was talking about this with my little sister and she said um what's what's a what's a, the one that was in princess diaries Anne Hathaway. There you go. But I feel like I think maybe I don't know why they didn't pick it. Maybe she's too tall. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. I think Emma Watson fits like the vibe. She's you know? perfect. Yeah, That's the cool. energy of Belle, the reading, the intelligence, yeah. that stuff. So I love Beauty and the Beast character. So lately, the last couple of years, I've really have had this like thing with Mary Poppins. I feel like she's yeah. so magical. And I also love that the first movie takes place in the past. Yeah. So that gives it like a little bit of more magic to me, you know? Mm -hmm. So they are going to do, I think, 2021, 20, they're going to do Cherry Lane in Epcot. Oh, really? Nice. Yeah. And I think they might, I don't think, I don't know if that's going to be it, if they're going to do like a little Mary Poppins thing, but it is, I mean, it is for Mary Poppins. So it was cool. And then on, Disney Plus, they have this show called Prop Culture. You guys mm -hmm. see that? Oh, yeah, we've been watching that. Yeah. Ugh, the Mary Poppins one is amazing. Yeah, That's it was really cool. good. That was very, very good. Yeah, I, we've been 
We've been like making. We've been our trying to keep up shows. with it, but yeah, that's a, that was a great episode. I just hope yeah. whatever they do with Mary Poppins is based off the original as opposed to the new one. Like the new one wasn't bad, but like the first one is just, it's iconic, you know. Like yeah. it's Mary Poppins, like you can't do, like nothing's gonna top that. So I hope that whatever they do is based off the first one. Yeah, it's I really think it will be too. It's yeah. interesting you mention that because Mimi and I did an episode on no, yeah, characters. We actually talked about it that don't have my or we think we're underrepresented in the parks that should have something else and yeah. one of the characters we mentioned was mary poppins that we thought yeah. a, a show where she was dancing with penguins or whatever uh, That'd be cool. yeah we yeah. we thought that yeah that was interesting because we mentioned that so that yeah. we have to go and check out what they do yeah Great. yeah and even you know there's been talk about the retheming of splash mountain i was talking to my friends about it and we were throwing out like all these interesting ideas that could work, you know, like Moana. Yeah. Oh man, I can't even remember Jungle Book. There was one that I said that I really liked, but I can't remember now. I know Princess and the Frog is a big contender for that one. Yeah, that'd be, you know, to go through like a bayou. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That'd be kind of cool, you know? Cool. I, I'm going to be honest, I don't really like getting wet in the theme parks too much because it makes yeah. me uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, but I think like that's 50% of the reason I won't ride it. And I think the other 50 is because, you know, I'm a millennial and um, I've never even seen that movie. You know, I don't know the song. I'm just, I'm writing it. I'm like, okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just kind of like, oh, like zipping it off, <laughs> dropping. We, like, we okay. talked about Moana. You should mention Moana. Yeah, we, we talked, talked about, about Moana, Moana being underrepresented. Ride. I thought some kind of combination boat ride roller coaster for moana would be really cool if they could find yeah. a way to do that right yeah, yeah. that'd be cool no, that that's great so i think you kind of answered our last question already but it's sort of would you rather space mountain or big thunder mountain that's really hard oh my god okay so i will say this is funny looking back i feel like i love big thunder mountain it's a different feeling during the day and at night I love it at night but when I'm actually at the park I'll ride both and the one that I want to ride again and again is Space Mountain yeah Hmm. so it's hard I think Big Big Thunder has a little bit better like obviously the theming is kind of you know it's cool um but Space Mountain is a lot of fun I mean me and my sister will just go again if we could We'll have like whiplash by the end. Right, just like <laughs> over and over and over. Well, yeah. The tro the, the one of the tropes of this show is how big a chicken I am. No, he and I will ride. You I'll, I've ridden Space Mountain. No, you I don't. Haven't. Yes, I did. I went on Space Mountain before, but I love Big Thunder Mountain because even for a guy like me that doesn't care for roller coasters, I can do that one over That's and over again. That's the only one you rode. No, that's not true. Yeah, we forced you on the Matterhorn. You're like, oh, this is actually fun. Like, yeah, that's the whole point. <laughs> Have you been to Expedition Everest? Mm-mm. No, no, we haven't done that one. There's no way he's getting on it, but I want to <laughs> ride it. So we'll I don't like roller coasters myself, but um, like I just don't. I don't go to Six Flags. I don't. There's no need. There's no reason for me to go there. Um, yeah. but I did do Expedition Everest because. I was like, oh, it's a Disney ride. I have to at least try it. And it's one of those things. Um, I read an article once, like many years ago, where I guess you or your brain releases something when you go down a drop, and that's why people like it so much. Um, my brain in the in the I don't want to ride the roller coaster, but right after, I want to do it again. But during it, I'm freaking yeah. out. I don't like roller coasters. <laughs> you know, even that those things that drop, I don't want to. I I don't like that feeling dropping. I don't like it. Yeah, yeah. I don't I'm like. The same way. Yeah. I don't like going upside down. And so when we were in California, my aunt she was like, "Oh, we're gonna do California Screaming, right?" Because like she forced me on the Tower of Terror. She was like, "You're doing it. I'm forcing you." And I was like, "No." And then she was like, "Okay, so California Screaming." And I I looked at her and I was like, "No, like I draw the line." And then they rethemed it, and I was like, "Oh, like that looks fun." <laughs> like, it's I don't know what line. it is about the re-theme, but it made it less intimidating. I don't know. I'm just crazy, I guess. I've been on I've been on Tower of Terror. Yeah, it's a lot for me. I'll so go cool. if you force me. It was so scary because we finally got to, like, the entrance of our um, elevator thing. And they were, and then, like, we were getting on, the door had opened, and then a cast member was like, oh, never mind, this one's broken. 
And I was like, are y'all kidding? <laughs> oh no, you almost got on it. Yes. And I was like, hang on. <laughs> and so by then my aunt was like, she was like, oh, I like, I mean, it's okay. And I was like, are you sure? Like, <laughs> I don't want to like die. And she's like, it'll but be okay. But you loved it when you got right, off. Right, I got off and I was like, that's so fun. Do you want to do it again? <laughs> oh no. Yeah, I have a picture of me and you know how there's the handles on next to seats? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're like, <laughs> you're like, I'm like, yeah. you know? Because yeah. it's multiple drops, and I think, like, it's, like, the third one that's, like, the, it's just too much. It's too much. Mm-hmm. Where you go all the way up and then all the way back down. Yeah, that's too much. Yeah, I'm, I'm gathering up the courage to do Splash Mountain because I don't yeah. like big drops what? either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what? Mimi keeps saying it's not it's not as steep as it looks because the perspective from the ground makes it look steeper than it really is. And, I don't know, she's telling me that. It's really I'm trusting nice. that you're not. It's, really it's not that bad. I feel like I, those like splash mountain, it's just so quick. And it's like, by the time you're like freaking out, it's over. Yeah. Right. Like, like you go through all the five stages of grief, like in, you know, three yeah, that's what I'm paying for. Like to go when you through level the, out, like you level yeah. and it's fine. Yeah, right. Well, good. So Crystal, thank you very much. This has been delightful. Um, you know, feel free to contact us at any time. If, if you have tips that you want us to share with our listeners, um, hopefully we can stay in touch and as things in the parks change, you know, we can revisit, uh, what's going on and share some more tips with everybody about how to make their trip as best as possible and as, you know, budget friendly as possible. Yeah. So how can our listeners find you online? How can they connect with you if they want more information about uh, having you help them plan their trip? It's so easy. Uh, you can do so many ways you can do, um, Twitter, which is planning magic two, planning the magic.net. I have a ca- contact form. Um, Instagram, planning the magic. All those, all the ways. There's every, if you just Google my name, it, it'll, I, I feel like there's probably maybe like six of us in this world. So if you Google my name in Disney, it's going to pop up for you right away. So we haven't used your last name in the show. You can share that with everyone if you like. Oh, yeah. So my last name is Seho, but it's spelled S E I J O. Okay. So that's another easy way to find me too. No one has that except like my family. Okay. Cool. Excellent. Well, listen, this has been great. We really yeah, do thank fun. you for, for being with us today and having this conversation. It's been delightful. Thank you and, for having uh, me. I've had so much fun. Yeah. No, it's great. We're, we're, too, we wanted to join. We're, we're absolutely thrilled that you, you took the time to speak with us today. Thank you very much. Yeah, this was fun. No problem. Let me know if you guys have any questions or anything like that. You want a dog, you know, <laughs> a <Excellent>. very needy one. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you very much. This has been great. Thanks so much. Have a good one. You got Me it. Too. Bye. So that was really fun. Um, That was a cool conversation. I, I learned a lot. Again, listeners, if you are interested in contacting Crystal, planningthemagic.net, um, that's her website. It's the same. That's the same handle on all her social medias. Um, So, yeah, if you're interested in contacting contacting her directly planning the ma- planning the magic yeah crystal was fantastic she was great to work with we were so thrilled to have her as our very first guest for our podcast i know i learned a lot today i got some really great tips for planning our next trip and hopefully our listeners got some great tips too all right all right well with that why don't we tell our friends one more time about how they can find us online and connect with us y'all can follow us on um instagram facebook and twitter at Disney Assembled, or you can send us an email, disneyassembled at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you guys. Um, please consider um, supporting us in, an, in another way, buying merch, joining the Patreon. That'd Absol- be really, really great. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you're out there on, especially on Apple Podcasts, if you would consider a five star rating and review, that would really be helpful. Helps others find the show. And if you enjoy our content, I'm sure others will too. And it'll be very helpful. And as Mimi said, you know, search for us on tpublic.com, Disney Assembled, uh, to get your Disney Assembled merch. That'd be great to help us out. And also, if you would, if you're so inclined, at patreon.com slash Disney Assembled. For $5 a month, you get exclusive patron content on Patreon. We'd be happy to give you a shout out here on the show. Well, I think that's a great episode. I think we've gone on long enough. I guess that'll do. Well, and until next time, see see you real soon. soon.